YouTube, it's Jonathan, and today we're doing this Cara Delevingne look. This is when she had her makeup done for one of the Suicide Squad premieres by Lisa Eldridge. Um, they both posted pictures of it on their Instagrams, and they popped up, and I immediately knew that I had to recreate the look. I absolutely love both of them. Lisa Eldridge is, like, the most talented makeup artist in the world, and I think Cara Delevingne is absolutely stunning. So, this is the smoky look that I came up with, and I hope you all enjoy. We're going to start out with a little bit of an illuminating primer. This is the Phyto Pigments Primer from Juice Beauty, and I'm just going to apply that with my fingers. The foundation that I'm using is pretty matte, so I wanted to use a primer that's going to give my skin a little bit of glow from behind that. Um, in the picture, Kara is not matte, but she's not luminous either. She just kind of looks natural, but you can tell she has on full coverage, if that makes any sense at all. Um, it's like realistic full coverage. So once the primer is worked in, I'm going to move on to my foundation today. I'm using the Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation from Hourglass, and I'm going to be applying this um, to the back of my hand, and then I'm going to use a buffing brush to work it into the skin. I'm working this into the skin in small sections one at a time, because this foundation can tend to dry pretty quickly, so I like to kind of work on one area, pushing the product in to get full coverage. To highlight the center of my face and for any additional coverage, I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and this is in the shade Vanilla, and I'm just going to start by putting that right into the corner of my eye, bringing it down, and then sort of up. I don't want to make too big of a highlight, but I do think the center of the face is definitely a little bit brighter on this look. To set around the eye, I'm using a translucent powder. This is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Powder, and I'm just going to take that around the eye area and through the center of the face. And then because Kara is quite tanned in this picture, I'm going to use sort of a, um, like, one step darker than my natural skin tone in a pressed powder foundation. And this is from Laura Geller in the shade um, Fair, and this is the Balance and Brighten powder, which gives the skin, again, like that matte glow, if that makes any sense. It's like matte luminous. This is basically like pre-bronzing, plus it adds a little extra coverage for that red carpet look. Now for the bronzer, I'm using my Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze. The placement of this bronzer is quite sculpty, actually. Um, I wouldn't call it like contoured. Um, it's definitely not like sharp, but it is sort of on the back of the cheekbone, kind of low and it comes down towards the mouth. There's definitely some wrapping the temple and up into the hairline. This is sort of like my normal bronzer placement, but a little lower. I feel like on Kara, there's a little bit of the bronzer right here, kind of bleeding into that eyeshadow look that we're gonna do in just a second. Um, but just to give her kind of nose a little bit more shape. And then I'm gonna put some right here to shorten my nose to give me more of that, like, Kara upturned nose. It's definitely not a blushy look, but I am sensing a little bit of a pinkness and a little bit of a sheen on the cheek, so I'm gonna use a very soft pink blush. This is from Bourjois Rose, or it's Jasper Rose, number 95, and I'm going to load up my brush and then brush off um, quite a bit of the product off onto my arm, so that way I'm just getting a little bit of glow. I'm going to put a little bit of eyeshadow primer on before I do my brows so it has some time to set. This is my favorite, the 24-hour eyeshadow primer from Smashbox. While that's setting, I'm going to work on my brows. Obviously, this is a Cara Delevingne look, so it's got to be intense on the brows. So I'm using a brow pencil that's slightly a little bit dark for me. This is the Sephora Waterproof Retractable Pencil in number 2 Nutmeg Brown. So I'm not going to be shy with the pencil today. Like, I normally like to just fill in gaps, but I am... I'm going to keep the underneath of my brow pretty soft, just because my brows, I think, are wider. Um, but the top of the brow, I'm going to keep pretty sharp. And then I think to kind of make my brows look like they have a bit more hair, I feel like when you darken your brows quite a bit, they can look pretty um, blocky. I'm going to just put a little bit of a dark brown brow gel and I think that's going to help define them a little bit better. And now that my brows look super scary and dark, I definitely need to get some eye makeup on so that I can kind of balance that out. The first thing that I'm going to do is take a black gel liner and put that on my entire waterline upper and lower. I'm using a really fine point waterproof liner to get that really inner corner. 
If you make any tiny mistakes, don't really worry about those. Um, you can clean them up with a Q-tip if you want, but we're going to be smudging a ton of dark eyeshadow on over this, so it doesn't really matter. I'm also taking that liquid liner, just kind of smushing that into the roots of the lashes, especially on the outer, just to make sure it's nice and dark in there. And then from the lower lash line, I'm just going to Bring it up a little bit to connect to that top liner. Now for shadow today I had a really hard time picking a palette because there are probably like 12 eyeshadow palettes that I have that could have worked for this, but I ended up settling on my um, Audacity in Paris palette because this makeup was done by Lisa Eldridge and she helped develop and design this palette, so I thought it was only fitting that I would use her palette. I'm going to start with a warm brown color and just start that in the crease area as a transition. And I'm taking that all the way from outer corner to inner corner. And then I'm just going to lay a little bit of that color onto the lid just as a base. Now with the slightly more tapered MAC 217, I'm going to grab the next shade to the left, which is a slightly deeper, slightly more reddish, warm brown. And I'm going to do the same thing, but keep that in a slightly more contained placement in the lower the lower upper crease, if that makes any sense. I'm sort of creating like the softest version of cut crease ever with this color. It's definitely not like a super defined cut crease, but it is definitely, there's separation between the crease and the lid. I mean, it really does come all the way into this inner corner under the front of the brow. I'm taking a slight bit of that onto the outer corner and about halfway along. Now with that same brush I'm grabbing the darkest matte brown in the palette and loading the brush up and then taking a bunch off on the back of my hand and I'm going to take that onto the outer corner of the eye and then lightly into the outer corner of the crease. Then slowly start to bring that close to the lash line but messily along. I'm just layering and blending that dark brown until I get the depth of color that I want. I think it's much better to sort of build dark shades like this um, slightly at a time until you get the intensity you want rather than just going in with a ton of dark eyeshadow and trying to blend it away. Um, I think you get a smoother, more long wearing result. I want a little more warmth right in the sort of center inner part of my lid here. Not quite the inner corner but just right here. So I'm going to go back into my bronzer with my um, eyeshadow brush and just layer a little bit of that on there. And for the inner corner, I'm going to grab the lightest um, shimmer shade from this palette on a pointed pencil brush. And I'm going to put that just around the tear duct. And with that same brush, I'm just going to wipe off any of that shimmer and then I'm going to mix together the brown and the black matte shadows from this palette and then go in just over top of that eyeliner because I want it to be even softer even though I blended over it as I was applying that um, the matte shades from earlier I just want to take it down even further that's the upper lid done so now I'm going to repeat the same steps on the lower lid so I'm going to start with my big fluffy brush grab that warm shade that I started with and just lightly sweep that along the lower lash line and this can be big it's a very low um, drop shadow underneath the eye and just like on the top lid I'm going to graduate smaller with my brush as I get deeper with the shade so next I'm gonna grab the MAC 217 that slightly warmer and readier tone to the left in this palette and put that just slightly higher then I put the first color then with that same brush, I'm going to grab the dark brown, tap it the excess off, and put that towards the outer corner, and then slowly bring that in the eye. And then for right against the lash line, I'm going to go back to that pointed pencil brush, mix the black and the brown, and I'm actually going to take this all the way up until that kind of golden, pale, highlight at the inner corner. I'm just using the brush to make sure that this again connects to the upper lash line just like I did with that liquid liner before. 
shadow done. I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. And now mascara. Today I'm using the Voluminous Butterfly Sculpt Waterproof from L'Oreal in the shade Blackest Black. And a generous coat underneath as well. She's very clearly not wearing false eyelashes in this look, so I'm just going over with a second coat to make my eyelashes the best they can be. For lips, I'm going to start with a little bit of liner. This is from NYX. I love their liners so much. This is the color 810 Natural. The lip in this is very... It's a neutral nude. It has a touch of pink in it, but it's not, like, skin tone. And it has a tiny bit of a sheen, but it's not glossy. The lipstick that I'm choosing is ugh, the Smashbox. Oh god, is this discontinued? This is Nylon Nude. I think this is discontinued. If it is discontinued, I'll leave a dupe in the description box for you. Just using my fingertip to tap over the lip. And this is the finished Cara Delevingne look with her makeup done by Lisa Eldridge. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you want to see more celebrity inspired looks, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below with your suggestions. For a complete list of every product that I used today, check out the description box. I've got a link to every single product that I used. So if you're interested, check those out. I also have links to my social media down there. I'm at John John Talks on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. And I'll see you all next time. Bye! to end um, my video that I'm filming for my third YouTube anniversary comes from Laura and she asks what has been